Hello, my name is Alice Luer. I'm the director of the dialysis unit at St. Peter's Health in Helena, Montana. Welcome to dialysis. So people that have kidney failure, as the kidney failure progresses, there's different stages of kidney failure, but as it, sta it, as it progresses to stage five, a person then needs to have some sort of replacement therapy to take the place of the kidneys. The kidneys are pretty important to the body. They get rid of all the toxins in the body. They also make urine and they do a lot to uh, regulate some of the hormones that a person needs in order to function well. So when the kidneys have failed to the point that they no longer can do any of their job, uh, the jobs, then they need dialysis. And that's often referred to as renal replacement therapy. And there's different treatments for kidney disease. Uh, there's transplantation, which is the optimal thing to get, is to get a kidney transplant. Then there is dialysis. You can do peritoneal dialysis, you can do home hemodialysis, or you can do in-center hemodialysis. And here at St. Peter's, we offer uh, all, all of those different modalities. We do do the transplant workup for people to get them off to a transplant center to get a transplant. So this is the machine that a patient that comes in center for dialysis three times a week is on. And the artificial kidney or the dialyzer is this little guy here. We have the fluid that helps remove the toxin, comes in through these ports. And then this is the blood tubing that will have be connected to the person. If they come in for outpatient center dialysis, usually it's a four hour treatment. And so one of the things about that is usually about an hour flex around that. So they're here five hours at least, three times a week. Currently we're in the home therapy room and home therapy consists of peritoneal dialysis and actually home hemodialysis. We have two nurses that are registered nurses that work within the home therapy department. And currently we have 22 of our patients out of 47 or 44 that are actually working uh, in home therapy and they're doing their dialysis at home. So one of the unique attributes here at St. Peter's Health is we have a very large percent of our, of our patients at home doing home dialysis. The national average is usually about 10% of the patient population. Here at St. Peter's Health we have up to 50% of our patients, sometimes over 50% of our patients actually dialyzing at home, which is just a real benefit to the person. Instead of trying to fit dialysis, uh, you know, their lifestyle around dialysis, at home they can fit dialysis into their lifestyle. So uh, with home peritoneal dialysis, they do treatments every night and a machine does the treatment for them. So they do their dialysis while they're sleeping and then they get up in the morning and have their days free. In center, where they come in for hemodialysis in center, they are on a set schedule like three times a week. So on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule or a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday schedule. And unfortunately that time is set. So they know they have to be here at that particular time and the ability to flex that around their lifestyle is very, very poor. So this is a peritoneal dialysis machine. This is the machine that a person connects themselves to at night and then it cycles fluid through their abdomen actually during the night and then the lining of the abdomen is actually worked as the filter. So it removes the toxins from the body into the fluid and then when that fluid gets dirty, it goes ahead and drains out and we put new fluid in. And usually during the night, they'll have four cycles of the fluid going in and out of their abdomen. And usually the treatment's nine hours and uh, patients do really, really well on this. But this is the home hemodialysis machine. So if somebody's on home hemodialysis, they usually do maybe five treatments a week. One of my most favorite treatment um, therapy schedules is two dialysis treatments, two days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. So we get really good, good clearance from that and it mimics more of the natural kidney function if they're on home therapy. This machine is not quite as efficient as the out center, or outpatient in center dialysis and they can get, you know, they only need four hours, three times a week because it's more efficient out there but this is more what's called a steady state. So the toxins in the body uh, aren't, don't do those peaks and troughs like they do in out, outpatient dialysis.
But this is our treatment. Uh, people that do this, this is the blood dialysis. And they set up the machine. There's this bottom part makes the actual dialysate, which is the fluid that helps pull the toxin off the blood. And they learn how to put needles in their own access and you know, dialyze at home. So in dialysis, we live and die by water. So we have to make sure our water is as clean as possible and all the impurities are removed from it. So uh, water in dialysis, a person can be exposed up to 90 liters of water during a dialysis treatment, which is a tremendous amount. So if there's any bacteria or any bugs in that, since we're directly accessing a person's bloodstream, we can make people very, very sick <laughs> if we don't have clean water. So our water comes in from the city, it goes through a water softener, it goes through carbon tanks, and then it goes through a reverse osmosis unit. Then it goes out to the patients in a loop. And then we have to make sure that loop is sanitized every night. So hot water goes through it every night to make sure that no bugs or anything grows in that loop. These big tanks here are the dialysate that we use to help pull the toxin off of the, the patients. So we actually mix that. We have a great big mixer that we fill up with that that water that we've treated, and then we fill these tanks, and then this tanks, these tanks then go out to the patients based on what they need for potassium in their bath. This is called a bath. So in here is the brine tank for the water softener, and the water softener, and then we have actually four sets of carbon, or four carbon filters, big carbon tanks that help remove the chlorine and chloramine from the water. And then this is our reverse osmosis unit that then polishes the water even more. And then on the other side of that, we have an ultraviolet light filter that will kill any bacteria that might come through. And because it will kill a bacteria, it will break it up. So then we have additional filters on the back of the machine that will catch those little parts of the bacteria that have been broken up by our ultraviolet filter if a bacteria gets to it. So once a month I run through and I make sure I grab water samples from a lot of the different areas in here and make sure that they don't grow any sort of bacteria. And if they do, I have to close it down. We can't dialyze. And we check uh, after the carbon tanks, we have to check to make sure there's no chlorine in the water because if there's too much chlorine in the water, we can't dialyze people either because uh, chlorine and red blood cells don't mix. They actually explode the red blood cell. So we cannot have any chlorine in the water. So we're pretty well regulated when it comes to water. So it, everything has to be labeled in here so you know what's coming in. So we have city water is, is this guy right here. And you'll see how the See how the arrows are now green? This means this water is somewhat pretreated. And when you get around the corner, it's going to turn into, um, it's still going to be green. But then when you get back over here on the other side of the reverse osmosis, all of my arrows turn blue. That means that's the fully treated water. And we have to make sure that nothing goes wrong anywhere within that process. So, that, you know, like the water softener, we can't just use regular old uh, soft, uh, you know, like the rock salt you can buy to put in your water softeners at home. We have to have pellets that are um, fairly clean. They're not full of a lot of the different stuff that you can get in rock salt. And then these carbon tanks are filled with a certain type of carbon. It has to be what's called a virgin carbon. It can't be reused. And it has to be a certain size. It has to have a certain surface area on it. So it can capture the chlorine and chloramine. So now, Stephanie's going to actually test the water for chlorine. We do that every four hours when somebody is on. Yeah, the water room is always very interesting. <laughs>